For thousands of years, indigenous people studied tracks and signs for their very survival. Chances are your ancestors too were once great trackers to help them hunt and protect themselves from predators. Now, to be an expert tracker, you can't be afraid to get dirty. You're gonna be spending a lot of time down in the dirt with your nose to the ground. The very best trackers also have a great imagination. This is because to track an animal, you have to think like an animal. Get down to their level and try to feel what an animal may feel. Try to predict where they could go next. I'm gonna pretend to be a coyote. Everything that walks, hops, slithers, or crawls across the ground leaves clues behind for us to find. These are called tracks and signs. Tracks are the footprints left behind by animals, and signs are all the other clues that you may come across, like scat, hair, dens, and trails. Studying these is called tracking, and park rangers use tracking to learn about the wildlife in their parks and to help find lost people. Now, if you're going out tracking, it helps to have the right tools. So I always bring with me a magnifying glass, tracking field guide, tape measure, gloves, a flashlight, and a brush. Every track is a mystery just waiting to be solved. It's been raining in the park for the last couple days, which means it's nice and muddy. This is great for tracking. You can also easily find tracks in wet sand or snow. So let's be detectives today and unlock the mysteries of all the tracks that we can find. We're in luck, our first track of the day. This one should be pretty familiar to you. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. That's right, it's a horse, and we see lots of horse tracks out on the trail. Okay, we found another track. Let's check it out. Whenever I find a new track, I always have to ask myself, what animal left it here? To answer this question, it helps if you know if it was a big, medium, or small animal. To help you figure this out, put your hand next to the track. Anything larger than your palm is going to be a large animal. About the size of your palm, and you're looking at a medium animal. Anything smaller, and it's gonna be a small animal. I can tell by the size of this track, I'm looking at a large animal. Once I determine if it's a large, medium, or small animal, I then like to count the toes. This helps me ID the animal. Here, I see two toes. One, two. Hey wait, these aren't toes at all. These are two pieces of one hoof. This is a deer track. Notice how this track is sort of shaped like an arrow. If you want to know which direction an animal is going, just follow the toes. The toes point in the direction of travel. This deer was walking that away. Are you ready to prove to all your friends that you're becoming an expert tracker? I'm gonna show you a really cool way to preserve the tracks that you find. This is called casting material and you can buy it in most hobby stores. Mix it with some water until you get a good paste. Wow. 
once you got a good mix about the consistency of wet mud, get yourself a mold. I just use regular paper and place it around the track. Then we're gonna pour our mixed casting material into the mold and over the track. Leave it to dry and check back in about 25 minutes. Well, our casting material has gotten nice and hard, so I'm gonna lift up the mold and check out our track. Oh yes, it worked perfectly. It's a little muddy, but that's okay. I brought a brush just for this occasion. Gently brush off all the loose dirt and we can even clean it up a little bit more when we get back to the ranger station. It looks great. The next question I ask when I find a track is how long ago did the animal pass through here? To age a track, you have to look at the small details, and to do that, you have to get nice and low. To help me, I have my magnifying glass. Let's take a look. As tracks age, they begin to fill in with dirt, leaves, and water. They also start to crumble at the sides. The more crumbling you see, the older the track is. Solving this mystery takes a lot of time and practice, but the more attention that you pay to the careful details in the world around you, the easier it becomes. Okay, Junior Rangers, that was really cool making casts of tracks. Let's see what other tracks we can find. Another great piece of sign to look for is a trail. I don't mean the trail that we're on now, I mean an animal trail. Animals use trails too, and these are called game trails. And there's one right here. Remember, get down low. It sort of looks like a little tunnel. I can definitely tell that animals have been using it. Do you want to have a closer look? Well, come on then. This is scat. Scat is a scientific word for poop. Scat is considered sign and it can tell us a lot about the animals that left it behind, like what they eat and how long ago they passed through here. If I put a glove on, I can check it out more closely. By looking at this scat, I can tell whoever left it behind eats both plants and other animals. I can see pieces of hair, bones, and the seeds of a prickly pear cactus. Based on what I see here, I've concluded that this is the scat of a coyote. Cool poop, man!
Are you ready for your Rangers Act fun fact? Yeah! All right, let's check it out. This is called miner's lettuce. It got its name from the miners in the California gold rush who would eat it to prevent them from getting scurvy. It's very high in vitamin C and pretty tasty too. Here, I found a series of four tracks grouped together. When you see a pattern like this, it's usually from a squirrel or a rabbit. These are slightly larger, so I can tell it's from a rabbit. They show up in a grouping like this because of how rabbits hop. Here, let me show you. The front paws come down, one, two, and then the hind legs swing out in front of them. Three, four. The further apart that these are, the faster the rabbit is hopping. Let me demonstrate. The front paws come down, one, two, and the hind legs swing out in front. Three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. Here, now you try. It's called doing the cottontail hop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Dens and holes are also great signs that animals are nearby. Can you guess who made this burrow and is living down in this hole? I'll give you a hint. I found this chewed up acorn right out front of it. If you guessed a ground squirrel, you're right. I wonder if our friend Pearl the squirrel is home. Oh, Pearl. Maybe she's back at the ranger station. Just like reading a book, reading tracks can be difficult at first, but gets easier the more and more you practice. Think of it like an art form that's part science, part imagination. It can be a whole lot of fun to look for tracks at your home, outside your school, or out on the trail. Let's head back to the ranger station and wrap things up. Walking down the trail, what do you think of that? Look down in the dirt, and I think I've seen a track. It's got two toes shaped like an arrow. Look here, I think it's near, it's a deer. Shh. Walking down the trail, what do you think of that? Look down in the dirt, and I think I've seen a track. It's got four toes shaped like an oval. The nails show which way it goes. It's a coyote. Arr Walking down the trail, what do you think of that? Look down in the dirt, and I think I've seen a track. It's a group of four, and there's some more. We can track it, cause it's a rabbit. Boing, 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 boing. Walking down the trail, what do you think of that? Look down in the dirt, and I think I've seen a track. It's a big paw with long claws. What's that there? It's covered in hair. It's a bear! Run! Hi, Junior Rangers. Welcome back to the Ranger Station. And look who I found. It's Pearl the Squirrel. I hope you enjoyed looking for tracks and signs with me today. Just to review, tracks are the footprints left behind by animals, like the deer track that we found and made a cast of. And signs are all the other pieces of evidence that we may find, like today when we found Scat, 
a game trail, and the ground squirrel den. Now let's do the Ranger Roundup. Today's question comes from Aiden, who lives in Orange County, California. Hi Ranger Zach, um, I was just wondering, why do plants have color? Thanks for your question, Aiden. Flowers are brightly colored to help attract pollinators. This is important because pollinators like birds and bees help spread pollen from flower to flower, which the plant needs to reproduce. The bright colors of a flower are like the bright colors of your favorite candy box. It catches your eye and you're drawn straight to it. I hope that answers your question. Now it's time for the Junior Ranger Challenge. This week's Junior Ranger Challenge is, you guessed it, get outside and go look for tracks and signs. Make sure to tag me in a picture of your special adventure at the Ranger Zach Show on Instagram for a chance to be featured as one of our Junior Rangers of the Week. And please subscribe to our channel. Make sure to tell all your friends about the Ranger Zach Show if they want to be Junior Rangers too. Just remember, until next time, there's a world of adventure right outside your door. Get out there and go explore. This is Ranger Zach, over and out.